So if you have a bunch of silver in a safe and you can get a house for a handful of it, you better do it. Today, I wanted to go into a little fantasy and explain why it is not actually a fantasy. At the depth of the Weimar hyperinflation, when the money substitute, the mark, was dying its final death, you could buy a nice house in Berlin for about a $100. Foreign exchange students, foreigners in Berlin at that time could exchange a $100 bill for a nice sized house in the swanky town areas of Berlin. And at a 15 to one ratio, gold to silver, that would mean about 75 ounces of silver for a house. Do I believe this is going to happen again? Yes, I do. But it's more than just a fantasy that we use to comfort ourselves in times when silver is down. It is a logical reality that this would happen. And at the end of this video, you'll understand why. I'm going to build up to it and first examine what is going on in the housing market and then how it is connected to silver and then what happens when mortgage-backed securities, which are pretty much in free fall now, when they collapse, what happens to the Fed, the dollar's issuer in that time frame, and how ultimately this translates to houses being sold for about 75 to 100 ounces of silver for a nice sized house in the United States. Obviously prices will vary depending on location and size, but generally that is what should be expected. And at that point we should dishoard our supplies. Let's begin with a look at the physical premiums, which now are pushing about 30% which is higher than bear market bottom in 2015 for the silver market. And from there, we'll go into the silver and housing pieces. And so premiums gone wild. Here is junk silver now pushing 29% premiums, just under 30%. And you see how the line that I drew at the current premium exceeds the premium at bear market bottom late 2015, early 2016, exceeded only by two financial crises when premiums typically go to records but this has not been a spike as much as it's been a slow and steady move higher, trending move higher. This is not quite a vertical line though, we are going fast now. And as a reminder, once again, here it was silver squeeze in 2021, right around a 4% premium and premiums have been moving higher ever since then. Now, I wanted to go into the housing issue and then we will pull this back into the silver and gold markets and explain what is going on. This is a chart that I could jiggered on Fred. And it shows in blue, the 30 year fixed mortgage rate and in red, the CPI inflation rate, which we all know is a lie, but we're using it anyway as a base. Now, what happens when the inflation rate, the CPI inflation rate as they measure it is above the 30 year mortgage rate? Well, that means that when a bank sells a mortgage, they will automatically lose money on it because if they're losing more purchasing power than they're gaining by loaning out money at an interest rate below the inflation rate, they will lose money by the end of that loan. It is guaranteed. Only once in US history has that happened prior to 2021. And that was in the 21 months between 1973, I believe it was November, 1973 to around July, 1975 or so. It was this period here in the black rectangle. And this was a period of stagflation of oil embargo and crisis, energy crisis, price controls, a whole bunch of stuff was missing everything up. And it hasn't happened since then until 2021. I believe it was March, 2021. And it has been this way for 16 months. And therefore, logically, anyone, any, any mortgage-backed security, any thing that buys this kind of paper is going to lose real purchasing power and it's going to be a losing investment. So the logical question becomes, why would a bank loan money? Why would a bank sell a mortgage on a home below the inflation rate? It doesn't make any sense. Why would a bank do that? And the answer is because they can offload the mortgage into a mortgage-backed security, bundle it up into a mortgage-backed security and offload it on someone or something that will buy the whole thing for an upfront payment. And what are those things? Well, one is the Federal Reserve, which buys mortgage-backed securities and less now. And the other is the government-sponsored enterprises, the GSEs, which are under the conservatorship of the United States government since 2008 and remain that way. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, whose stocks are basically worthless because they're under conservatorship. So when they buy these mortgage-backed securities, what happens? They give the banks an upfront payment, meaning the government gives the bank an upfront payment or the Fed gives the bank an upfront payment. And they will automatically lose on these MBSs. Now, as the issuer of the dollar as a unit of liability, 
the dollar is essentially backed partly by mortgage-backed securities. And so when mortgage-backed securities fall, the dollar falls. The value of the dollar in purchasing power falls. Yes, the value of housing falls. The capital value of housing falls. So all who made investments in housing will also lose, but rents will not go down. The cost of living will continue to rise. So this sets the stage for a falling housing market and rising consumer prices at the same time, which is essentially what was happening in the mid 1970s during that time when the inflation rate was above the 30 year mortgage rate. Now here are two pieces of evidence that the housing bust is already well on its way. The first is this article from CNBC from yesterday, Wednesday, July 20th, or two days ago, if you're watching this now, which you are, you're never watching it then, you're always watching it now. Mortgage demand drops to a 22 year low as higher interest rates and inflation crush home buyers. So surging inflation and interest rates are hammering American consumers and weighing on the housing market. Mortgage demand fell last week, hitting the lowest point since 2000. According to the Mortgage Bankers Association and Bullet Point 3, buyers have lost considerable purchasing power as rates have almost doubled since earlier this year. Second piece of evidence, this is the largest MBS, Mortgage Backed Securities ETF, traded under iShares MBS ETF, symbol MBB. And we see here what this ETF was doing in 2008. We see a gentle fall here by our current standards. And here we have a humongous fall from about $107 to what is it now, 97, and a little bit of bounce here. I think it's a dead cat bounce, but this is the first time, including 2008, when we have smashed through the 200 week moving average, the red line, and we have a death cross for the very first time in this ETF. Mortgage backed security is doing much worse than they were in 2008, and the rest is coming just like it was in 2008, but the timing, none of us know. We're in that zone where we know the fall has already happened and we're just waiting for the consequences to be lined up and executed. Now, let's get back to silver for one second. Just to look at the technicals of silver to commodities ratio, this seems to be the last bastion of support. And I don't think so we'll go below this line if it even meets it, but here we have the silver to commodities ratio reaching a low, being the price of commodities is the most expensive in terms of silver back in early 2015. This sell-off from August 2020 until now has been the most vicious in terms of commodities. And so if you've held this far, then you can get through the rest of this bear market in terms of commodities for silver. Now let's tie all this together. Housing, silver, and the market logic of a 15 to one monetary ratio. Okay, so we saw from mortgage-backed securities, before 2008, the Fed didn't own any of them. So before 2008, those markets were not joined at the hip, now they are. Second bullet point here, the role of silver, as I explained in a previous silver report, is to divide gold for retail transactions. And when paper is trusted, when you have a gold substitute paper or digital that is trusted, that the, that the public accepts, then there is basically zero demand for monetary silver. Now you could say coins, yeah, we demand coins, we hoard coins, we are silver stackers. So isn't that monetary demand? The answer is not really, no. It is hoarding demand. Monetary demand is the demand to use actual physical silver material coins as money in a transaction, giving somebody coins in exchange for something else. That is a monetary demand, but that is not happening now because instead we use substitutes. But when that paper, when that substitute is no longer trusted, all of a sudden demand for monetary silver to use those coins in transactions for other things becomes infinite. Why? Because everyone in the world needs silver material in order to divide gold for retail purchases. And all of a sudden the monetary demand for silver goes from zero to 100 or whatever the maximum number is on a scale of one to whatever. Okay, now here's where housing comes in. In Weimar, luxury homes went for about a hundred dollar bill. And that is true, about five ounces of gold. Now at a 15 to one ratio, that's about 75 ounces of silver. Now, what is the logic of having a house sell for what you could uh, enough for silver you could hold in one hand and just hand over for an entire house. How does that make any sense? It, we just don't say it's just fantasy and crazy. Well, it's happened before. And why does it make sense that it will happen? Because in a world where government money substitutes are no longer trusted, there is no way to divide goods and services rationally. And therefore the division of labor breaks down. This is the zombie apocalypse, okay? That is the equivalent of it because if the division of labor breaks down, nobody's going to eat and everyone's going to starve to death. And so what is the primary thing that a market needs in that situation, in that scenario? It needs to encourage the hoarders of silver specifically 
to dishoard their supplies at any cost because the economy needs a monetary medium in order to restart the division of labor and keep everyone from dying. It's more important than food. It is more important than water because there's no way you're going to get food if you don't have a monetary medium to divide goods and services and to establish a division of labor. And so the market screams for the silver hoarders, for the silver bugs, for the silver backs, whatever you want to call us, to dishoard our supplies at the best possible exchange rate. And you're not going to get much better than that. So we know when to do that. And the need for a real physical monetary medium, silver as a monetary medium, is going to be at the maximum of what it is possible to be because everybody will need it. And so if you have a bunch of silver in a safe and you can get a house for a handful of it, you better do it. Because by doing that, not only will you be able to acquire real wealth in enormous quantities, but the economy in which you live, the division of labor in which you participate, will be able to reestablish itself thanks to your dishoarding of your physical silver supplies. And so as we try to get through this final correction, keep that in mind. There is no escape from this. It has happened every single time in monetary history since gold and silver became money. It's going to happen again. This is just a matter of getting through this nasty correction as the reserve currency of the world dies. When a chicken is slaughtered, it runs around for several seconds without a head. It is already dead. Why is it still running around? Because of electrical signals are still in its nerves, but it is not going to run around for much longer. The monetary system is a chicken that has been slaughtered without a head, running around and about to fall over. Keep that in mind and you'll get through this.